Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I've got a really good treat for you today. This is the brand new Geely Jia Ji. That would be Geely's first MPV and China's first hybrid MPV. Now, most of you will know Geely as the owners of Volvo and Lotus, among other brands. But in addition to pumping millions of dollars into foreign companies, they also stay busy making their own cars. In this case, this is their first MPV. And what I'm interested in finding out is, was Geely correct in investing in an MPV when the MPV market is headed downhill? Or should they have just built another coupe SUV? Let's find out. According to Geely's website, their intention with the Jia Ji was to abandon the so-called box on wheels design aesthetic in favor of a more flowing design language that they refer to as accelerating through time. Now, I have no idea what accelerating through time is supposed to look like, but the results aren't half bad. I wouldn't call it a revolution in MPV design, but the overall look is handsome, if a bit traditional. Let's start with the outside, shall we? I find that a lot of Geely's front-end design is pretty generic. Around 2014, they hired a very famous designer, Peter Horbury from Volvo, actually, to give them a whole revamp, but the results were, frankly, a little bit boring. However, this latest edition is very handsome, if you ask me. In particular, this silver element that runs the width of the front end, I think really adds something on top of the normal, you know, grill hole here. Uh, it gives it a sense of width and presence that other models do not have. The Jaji is actually a pretty great place to spend time. I recently rode in a Mercedes-Benz that was at least four times the price, and I have to say that in terms of style and quality, the difference wasn't as big as you might expect. The screens in the Jaji are easy to use and well placed, and the material quality, especially in this one with this nice brown interior, were genuinely surprisingly good. Now that we're inside, let's have a little bit of a look at the interior. Geely describes their design as space-time inspired. The result is sweeping, flowing lines across this multi-layered dashboard here. Uh, in particular, I like that they have this silver element here that spreads across the width of the dashboard and mirrors the same element on the front end. You'll also notice, if you look closely, some elements such as here on the top or on the overhead lighting area here, the door speakers, they have a distinct Chinese style of design that I think is actually pretty wonderful. Many Chinese companies go out of their way to avoid looking like a Chinese car. I think that geely has been able to combine international design aesthetics with a unique Chinese style very successfully. Now, the true mark of excellence when it comes to an MPV interior is not so much how it makes you feel like a time-traveling fighter pilot, but rather practicality. And in that respect, the Jaji is also very good. You can see from the, from the uh, interior seating here, there are plenty of storage areas here, here, there's the center armrest as well, and then underneath the center armrest, there's copious room to put things like phones, bags, and other stuff. The same is true for the rear seating as well, which makes sense because the target market for this MPV is small families. Buyers can also choose from either a six or seven seat configuration with three seating options. Two plus two plus two, two plus two plus three, or two plus three plus two. Every seat in the Geely Jaji is comfortable, but I'm a particular fan of the second row because they have an incredible amount of angle. Oh yeah, that's good. As a mid-sized MPV, you might expect the Jaji to have decent space in the rear, but frankly, it doesn't. I'm gonna put this small bag to give you an idea, but apart from that, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. If you go grocery shopping, I hope you only brought three kids, because one of these seats is gonna need to lay down.
Perhaps the biggest selling point, however, is the availability of Geely's 360-degree security identification zone advanced driving assistant technologies that give the Jiaji level 2 semi-autonomous driving. The system bundles a whole bunch of safety technology, including intelligent cruise control, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, autonomous emergency braking, rear cross traffic alert, rear collision warning, blind spot detection, lane change assistant, and speed limit identification. The Jiaji comes with a range of small displacement engines, including both mild hybrid and plug-in hybrid configurations, making it the first hybrid MPV available in China. The entry-level Jiaji makes do with a 1.5 liter turbo motor made it exclusively to a manual transmission, while those with more means can opt for a 1.8 liter TGDI four-cylinder with six-speed automatic. Today, we are driving the 1.5 liter mild hybrid, which is, like the range-topping 1.5 liter plug-in hybrid, you uh, attach to a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. I would have loved to have get my hands, gotten my hands on the PHEV version in order to test its 258 combined HP and claimed 56 kilometer all-electric range. Alas, we'll have to make do with the mild hybrid version and its 190 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque. I have a feeling that most buyers will opt for either the 1.8 liter four-cylinder or this MHEV, so this is actually a good look at what the average consumer will experience. I've been driving the Jiaji in the mountains of Ningbo, a city about three hours south of Shanghai, for the past couple of days, and it's an MPV. Would I rather be driving uh, even a Civic? Yes, but it handles itself pretty well on the mountain roads. I wouldn't describe it as tossable, but the steering is pretty direct if obviously very numb. Um, when you're driving in mountain roads like this, these A-pillars that are about the size of, you know, Eastern Europe are kind of a problem because you can't see around the corners. But other than that, honestly, it's, it's better than say, you know, your average SUV in terms of handling. Um, the powertrain, which I mentioned earlier, is the Volvo three-cylinder. I gotta say, I've never driven it in a Volvo application and maybe on a Volvo platform with more sound deadening and a little bit more refinement, it's better, but frankly, it comes off here as a bit unrefined, a little bit rough. When you accelerate, it's not particularly smooth, um, particularly in the uh, sport mode. There is both comfort, normal, and sport settings. The owner of the car insists that he likes to drive into the sports setting, but that is not my experience. The sports setting I found really only adjusts the throttle mapping and it's, it's just touchy. It doesn't feel particularly good. Um, I like the comfort setting because it lets you, lets you exit the corners a little bit more smoothly as opposed to the sport, but you know, it's an MPV. So the sports setting's not gonna be Perfect. So, let us return to the original thesis statement for this review. Would Geely have been better off spending their money building an SUV instead of an MPV? Honestly, I think the answer is yes. Even a great MPV like this, with efficiency, affordability, and good looks, just isn't going to be enough to break through that hard crust of, S of the SUV market. The suggested retail price for this Geely Jiaji, including all of the amazing safety features, the big screens, and the hybrid powertrain, is 15,000 euros.